Hello, my name is Tyler Mowry, and welcome to the Writer's Mind Podcast, episode 13. All right, welcome to another episode of the podcast. If you are looking for episode 14 and all of the other even episodes, you can find them on the Patreon at patreon.com slash the writer's mind. So today what I want to talk about is this uh, article I ran across in the New York Times. And let me see how old this is. Um, Okay, so this is an article that came out in 2014. So this is an article pretty old, pretty old. It's by um, Amy Chua and Jed Rubenfeld. And um, I would just want to read an excerpt of this. And this is, the article is titled, uh, What Drives Success? So if you want to read the entire article, you can check that out. But really what I want to focus down on is this, just a couple paragraphs here that I really found interesting. Because what I want to talk about today is success, success. and, and, you know, this idea of what drives success like they're talking about and um, how that relates to yourself. And um, because what they're talking about here is what really mentally, you know, inside of a person, their worldview creates success and puts them on a track to be successful in life. So here's let me read this first. So. Uh, The article says, it turns out for all their diversity, the strikingly successful groups in America today share three traits that together propel success. The first is a superiority complex, a deep-seated belief in their exceptionality. The second appears to be the opposite, insecurity, a feeling that you or what you've done is not good enough. The third is impulse control. Any individual from any background can have what we call this triple package of traits, but research shows that some groups are instilling them more frequently than others and that they are enjoying greater success. And it goes on to say a little bit more. It's odd to think of people feeling simultaneously superior and insecure, yet it's precisely this unstable combination that generates drive, a chip on the shoulder, a goading need to prove oneself. Add impulse control, the ability to resist temptation, and the result is people who systematically sacrifice present gratification in pursuit of future attainment. So, I really thought this was interesting, and I kind of want to break this down, uh, because I've been thinking about this ever since I read this article, and especially read this snippet. So, What they're outlining here is three major um, mental traits that are propelling success. And, you know, they were really interesting to think about. You know, the first one they talk about is a superiority complex. So their idea is that someone who is not yet successful, right, believes they, uh, you know, are exceptional, believe they deserve success, and... uh, you know, ultimately believe they are better in some way to the people around them. They're more intelligent. um, They are stronger. They are faster. In in some way, they believe they are exceptional uh, to the people around them. And that was really interesting because I think, you know, starting with that, I think that's really, really true, right? Like, yes, you gain confidence by having success. I totally believe that. And that's very obvious that as you gain successes, those successes then feed into your own view of yourself and they feed into your own confidence. Um, and they allow you to take bigger risks and make, um, stronger moves because you go from this state of believing that you, you know, are superior in some way to then having some proof of that in the real world, right? When you begin to make actual progress and you actually begin to separate yourself from the pack, uh, then you're, you're reinforcing what is an idea that is already there, an idea that is there before you have any success, which is this idea that in your career or in your intellect or in some way, you are better than those around you. And, uh, it, 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 this is kind of an interesting thing where 
people really look down on others who, or, or people, I, it's funny, you know, because if, if you have a superiority cl- complex, in some way you are looking down on the people around you, and they're also looking down on you for having a superiority complex, right? So it kind of goes both ways um, in that sense. And so, but I really think this is true. I mean, you know, for for me to make YouTube videos, let's say, for me to make YouTube videos about screenwriting, this is me saying that I believe that I have figured this out more than other people have. You know, that's what I'm saying. Um, and I believe that's the case. And so in that sense, you can see that, you know, that is my superiority complex at play, right? Or even the idea of, you know, moving from the town I was born from or born in uh, and moving from there to Los Angeles to, you know, move into the film industry and that sort of thing. Even even that move is this idea that you're saying, oh, you know, I can do more than what is here in the place that I'm from, right? And that is all wrapped up in a superiority, comp- superiority complex. Now, I think what's interesting is people like to say that that is inherently a bad thing. Whereas I don't think so. Because, um, you know, there is... It, it, there's a positive side to that and there's a negative side to that. I, I think there's a lot of, there's many, there are many positives and you believing you can go and do something exceptional and then going out and doing that thing, going and proving to yourself that you can do that. Now, obviously the negative side of that is you looking at others and saying, oh, I am objectively a better human being than you are, right? That is where we get into all sorts of problems. Um, but having a superiority complex is not necessarily innately evil or innately bad. And I think that what we like to do is we like to hide uh, those who are trying to achieve things. They like to, or they feel like they must hide um, their actual belief that they feel like they are exceptional so that other people, you know, don't hate them. And, um, you know, on a certain level, it's important. This is kind of where you get um, kind of flexing and these sorts of things where people want to really shove it in other people's faces that they have done something exceptional, right? And so obviously you're getting into a muddy waters here and this is something that you, you have to watch yourself on. Um, but having a, a self, like having strong self-belief that you can go and achieve something, right? That is a superiority complex. And I don't think that is innately wrong. I think it's valuable to have confidence in yourself and then go out and prove that confidence. Now, the problem is you have people who, um, which, you know, they're not necessarily talking about in this, but you have people with a superiority complex that never actually go out and try to do anything interesting or of value, right? And so you really have to go and externally prove at your state of mind, right? So I think it's it's good to start in that zone of, okay, like I feel like I can do more. You know, I feel like I have the skills, I have the intellect or whatever, I have the charisma to do more. Now I need to go out into the real world and externally prove that belief. Because without doing that, you're just the guy in a town who thinks he's better than everyone. And that is a problem. Um, so... First off, they talk about this superiority complex, which I really think is true. Um, you have to start with a belief that you can actually do this because to, to get yourself off the ground and to be consistently putting in work when nobody cares, that comes down to your belief that you actually can get this thing working. You can be successful in whatever field that you you are trying to be successful in and you can be exceptional. And that is all an element of a superiority complex. Um, so the second, you know, as I say, appears to be the opposite, which is insecurity, a feeling that you or what you've done is not good enough. And I think this really relates to it as well, because if you just have the superiority complex and you don't have a belief that what you're doing isn't good enough, then you're not actually improving. And so that's how you end up as the guy in the town who, you know, thinks he's all that, but has never done anything of interest at all. That's the guy that thinks every single thing he does is golden and he doesn't have to do any work 
to actually improve. And so that's the problem is with the insecurity element, it's that is playing into your belief that you must continue to do work to actually improve and actually get to a point where you are doing uh, work that is at the level of um, you be, uh, th- where your work is at the level that you believe you can get to, right? This comes down into um, Ira Glass's famous speech on taste, where uh, he talked about many artists and writers, uh, they have great taste, they know what is exceptional, but when they're actually doing work, they don't like it and they, they, they think it's terrible and so what they have to do is they have to close that gap by doing a lot of work and slowly bringing their external work to the level of their internal view of what exception what is exceptional work and so essentially they are bringing their external work up to the level of their you know um belief in what is exceptional and what is superior and so you have to have both you really have to so uh, like I think being a perfectionist, people say, oh, I'm a perfectionist. If they are a perfectionist in the way that they are not doing any work, then this is a problem. But if they are perfectionist in the way that they want things to be right and they are doing work and doing work and doing work and doing work to get their work to a level that they um, can be happy with and proud of, then that can be a, that can be good. And that that's, um, there's kind of procrastination perfectionism and there is perfectionism in the sense that your taste is high and you're trying to achieve a certain level of taste. Um, so, and then the third, the third element being impulse control. This idea that not only do you, you believe you have a high belief in yourself, but your belief, but you believe your work is not there yet and you have to get your work up and you also are not falling into impulses and distractions and the things that are around you. Um, and I think that this is a, like that, that essentially keeps the first two elements kind of on the rails because without impulse control, I think that's kind of how you end up depressed because you want to do great things. You know that your work isn't on the level uh, that it should be to do great things. Yet you are constantly falling into impulses and falling into things that you don't really want to be doing. And so you never actually make any progress. And so then you become depressed at your and angry at yourself because you're not making any progress. And so you have to have that impulse control. That's actually you know, part of the concept of the practical screenwriting course where, um, you know, I'm talking about con- building the consistency, building a process of writing that is going to allow you to get your writing out, even when you don't feel like writing and even when your impulses are taking you somewhere else away from writing. Um, and so, you know, that is... Um, that really is how it operates. Like I, I really thought that was um, just a very simplistic way of looking at it where successful people have this layer of belief in their own superiority and an insecurity in the work that they do. And all that they're doing over time is trying to bridge those two things. And I think that that is a, there's a way where that can be a very unhealthy process and there's a way where that can be a, a, a healthy process because in one way you can look at it as you are a person who is growing over time, right? And you have personal growth, you know, improvement in skill set and you can look back in time and say, okay, I can see myself growing as a person and getting better and getting stronger and doing more. Um, but there's also a negative version of this where your insecurity is is pummeling your progress where you are constantly so angry at yourself that you're not at the finish line that you can't be at all happy with the work you're doing now 
And I think it's easy to get caught in the middle where once you have a little bit of success, you're like, okay, I have to be at the end now. I have to be at the end. If I'm not at the end, I haven't made it. Um, but I think it's, it's important to understand the process that when you have, when you've gained a little bit of success in the beginning, this is beginning to show you like, hey, you can do this. You, you are exceptional at this certain task, but you are still within the process of it. So then you really have to fall in love with the process of improving if you're ever going to get to that final layer where you're actually proud of the things you're doing and you're doing them at a very high level um, uh, you know, again and again. And you know, I really think that that was interesting because so much of who we are and how we view the world and how we operate, like our lives are so heavily shaped by our mindsets. And I think that we kind of exist in a world where the mindset term is kind of thrown around by obnoxious people. Um, and because it's thrown around by these obnoxious people, we like to discredit the concept and say, oh, like talking about mindset is just like this stupid concept that, uh, you know, people use to divert you away from practical help, right? But what what mindset is and what mindset, what mindset shifting is, is changing your beliefs, and so it's interesting looking at writers who kind of think the concept of mindset improving or mindset shifting is stupid because it's like their entire field, their entire craft writing is about characters going through shifts in mindset, right? Shifts in self-belief, shifts in personal belief, shifts in worldview and shifts on outlook. All these things are internal shifters that are happening and impact the external things that are going on. And so when you take away mindset changes, all you have is just external movement and all of the practical help in the world will be less like less helpful to you if you don't actually have that bottom layer uh, making the, the necessary changes that it needs to make, right? So the mindset layer, your viewpoint, your beliefs, like this is the core layer of who you are. And so if all you're doing is saying, oh, I'm going to add things on the top of this, you're not, and, and you're not fixing that level, then you're not actually synthesizing the information that you're getting. It's like going to the gym and having a great routine, but if you're never in the mindset of like focusing on your muscle groups, for example, then you are not actually uh, training as efficiently as you possibly could be, right? So it comes down to, uh, you'll hear trainers and stuff talk about the mind-muscle connection, where of course you can move the weight, but it's about can you connect your mind with a particular movement of that muscle and focus on moving that muscle and actually create, and that is what creates um, growth and strength. And, um, you know, so when you're looking at writing and when you're looking at your own life and you're looking at your own career, what you're doing is going to be layered on these mindset elements. And so, um, it would be interesting to think about yourself and to say, do you have these three traits? Like, do you feel like you're missing one of them? Do you feel like this is who you are and you have kind of the potential to be successful in this way? Or do you feel like uh, you're, you're missing one and, and that's kind of holding you back? So, you know, I've met a lot of people who had a superiority complex and they also thought everything they ever wrote was perfect and brilliant and a work of genius. And so they're missing, the insec they're missing that insecurity that's necessary to, to keep them moving forward. And I've met people who do good work, but they're so insecure and they have no self-confidence. They can't ever get anything on the, off the ground and they can't ever hold their ground uh, in the sense of saying like, no, this work is valuable because they don't have any self-belief at all. And, um, you know, and then I've also watched people who have that 
insecurity and they have that superiority complex and they can do good work uh, and they want to consistently do good work, but they are a slave to their impulses and they can't ever get that much writing done because they're always procrastinating or they're always trying to find something to do and they're always angry at themselves because they're always procrastinating and they're not sitting down and they're not doing the work and occasionally when they do the work it is good and they're on the right track but their impulses are just running their life you know I I, I really see that as well and so um, I think for me my biggest problem of the three which is why I built a this practical screenwriting course, it's why it's been like the focus of my life is that impulse control, right? Because I definitely feel like I have the superiority complex element and I definitely feel like I have the insecurity of my own work element. For me, it really comes down to the battle between what I want in the future and my present impulses and trying to find a, a, a place where I'm not so angry at myself for um, you know, giving into an impulse. Um, and at the same time, um, you know, trying to continually remove bad impulses from my life and replace them with things that I actually want to be there for the long term. And really, I think if you can actually conquer the impulse element of this, you know, three of these three things, then you're able to just move so quickly. Because so much of writing especially is done in these like spurts of energy where we feel like writing and we've been procrastinating for months, but today we feel like writing and we get 30 pages done because we just blow through it and what we did today was right. And then we don't write for another three months. And so we're sitting on 40 pages for three months because we wrote or we had a good weekend of writing and then that's it. And then we're back to, you know, being pulled away by different impulses and we can't stay focused. And even that is being a slave to your impulses because you had the impulse to write, you did write, and that, you know, is when you wrote and you still have that impulse. Um, and I, I think that is the the biggest that is the that's the fight. Like that's the one that you're in the fight on, you know. Because the other two, I feel like usually are just always there, but the fight is against your own impulses. And um, so, yeah, I, I just thought that was a really, this is, it's just a really fascinating idea. And I'm, you know, because I like teaching, because I like talking about concepts and breaking them down, um, I really like going into the most fundamental level of, okay, how do you shift someone's ability to learn correctly at the most fundamental level, right? I really think that you have to learn how to learn before you can do different tasks. And that learning how to learn is an element of mindset. And I also think that the most fundamental skill that we um, can learn is the idea that, hey, if you, the different categories of your life can be learned and improved uh, by you learning and developing them. And once you realize that and you realize that different areas of your life can be improved by you actually intentionally seeking wisdom and knowledge to improve those areas, then you realize that you really can do a lot more than you think you can. Um, at least that's my viewpoint on it. Like I, I really, you know, and this, this is funny because this goes back to the idea of the superiority complex because I really have a belief that different things I wanted or different things I want to do, like if I wanted to shift and just focus on that thing, I believe that I could do it and do it very well. Um, you know, if I wanted to leave writing, for example, and um, be a musician, like I think I could be a musician, uh, it would of course take me time and it would take me years to develop and learn a skill set. But if I was actually focused on doing that, I really believe that I could. And um, 
because it's just about learning. And once you learn how to learn, you realize that, okay, the system of learning is pretty straightforward. You develop habits, you develop focus, you, um, you know, you, you have that kind of innate taste on what is good, what is bad, and you start to understand the skill set of, of building in a certain career field, and then you just go from there. And so, um, you know, I think that looking at children, right, it's interesting to say, okay, what if you could intentionally instill that into children? Is that even possible? Could you intentionally instill this idea of, you know, superiority complex plus insecurity about one's own work plus impulse control, you know, because I think you can teach impulse control and I think you can likely, I think you can teach superiority complex. You can, you can instill confidence into a kid, but the question is, can you teach insecurity in, in one's work? Because, Insecu- that insecurity is really coming from taste. And I think, to me, I really think talent is more about your level of taste and your level of insecurity about your own work than it is your proficiency at a particular thing, right? So proficiency at a particular thing, you're just able to do something well. But if you have really, really good taste about let's say writing you really you really have an idea of what stories are good what stories are bad and that that's kind of something you innately know then you're able to work on getting your own writing to a, a level of it being actually good because you have that innate taste based upon the insecurity um that you have over your own work and your ability to look at other people's work and know what is good and what isn't so i think that's the insecurity element may be the most key and the most unteachable because if you don't have that and you think your work is good, it's hard for you to improve. And so I think that um, when you when, when somebody teaches you, and you actually have a a click in your mind of, oh, this makes sense. This does align with my taste. This does align with uh, the idea in my head of what is good, and I can adjust accordingly. If you can do that, then you can, you know, really make progress. But you have to have, like, that strong level of insecurity. It's kind of interesting that without that strong level of insecurity and frustration about your own work, there's no way to actually be very successful. And, um, you know, negative emotions like insecurity are very powerful. You could even consider, or some people do consider, you know, a feeling of superiority, a negative emotion. But it's interesting how useful some of these things are. And, um, you know, it, it's interesting because we shouldn't all be walking around with a superiority complex, right? And yet, it's a very useful element of success. So it's interesting how that you know, plays into itself. Um, so, um, but I'm interested to know your thoughts on this because that really hit me, the idea that it, it comes down to these three things. It comes down to your sense and feeling of superiority, your own insecurity about your own work, and impulse control. And if you're trying to be successful, I think it's important to take a look at those and and ask yourself, where do you fall in those? Do you have like strong confidence in yourself? Do you have this feeling that you actually are exceptional and can do better than other people do? And do you have an insecurity about your own work? Do you struggle to feel good about your own work because you are constantly comparing it to great works? And do you have control of your own impulses? Can you actually say no to things and focus and get work done um, even though like you feel like going and doing this thing that 
is in the short term more fun or more pleasurable. So it'd be interesting to think about that for yourself. And uh, if you're on YouTube, leave it in the comments below where you feel like you are on that because I'd be interested, I would be interested to see what you say. And if you want to listen to the 14th episode right now, you can find it on patreon.com slash the writer's mind. And I will see you next week.